Alec Baldwin continues to be very slippery, releasing a new video saying that he's doing everything he can to comply or he's not not complying or he's going to be working with as soon as he gets in all sorts of weasel words coming out of his mouth at epic speed in gigantic proportions. And so we're going to go through this new Instagram video piece by piece and see if we can break this down because I am still of the mindset that all of this is intentional. Some people say he's going crazy. I think he's still concocting a strategy that is being proffered forward by his defense attorneys. And we're going to break that down. The clip starts off looking like this. Alec Baldwin is in his car. And so as usual, it's going to be a little bit of a scattered conversation. We're used to seeing Alec Baldwin sort of jump between different things. Today in this video, we're going to get about a minute or maybe two minutes of him talking about this Splenda packet, this little packet with a note on it. And we're going to see why this is relevant or why he might be communicating about this. And remember from a lawyer's perspective or, or more accurately from a juror's perspective or from a prosecutor's perspective or from anybody who's going to be making critical decisions in this case, if they're watching this, what is Alec Baldwin trying to communicate it? What is the purpose of this communication? Let's take a look at this first, what feels like a very bizarre introduction, Alec Baldwin. friend's house, my friend David's house this morning, she found the Splenda packet. Okay, so it, it's a strange way to introduce the video, and that's sort of a minute there. And there's a lot of, I think, reasons for that. It sort of feels like it's a non sequitur. He just kind of comes out, what the heck, where is he? They found the Splenda packet. So what, Alec? There's Splenda packets all over the place. We don't know yet that there's going to be a message on that Splenda packet that he's going to tell us about. And so it's going to go sort of into that narrative about this is meaningful, this is purposeful, this is symbolic. And so you can sort of to analyze, start to analyze the situation and say, what is, what is the purpose behind this statement, behind this message? You can break this down. A lot of people will say there really is no purpose. Alex just losing his mind, the stress, the pressure, the potential criminal charges, pr imprisonment term that may be forthcoming is bringing too much pressure to bear down upon him, and he's just sort of losing it. I don't think that's the case here at all, but that would be one thing, is to say there is no purpose, and you're looking too far into this. The other way that you could say this is that well, it's, it's just a true story. He's a little bit of a weird guy. It's just a true and interesting story almost like a fortune cookie. You know, you go to the fortune, you say, oh, here's what my fortune says. And you tell some people about it. He's a public figure, an interesting thing happened. And so he's also going to be communicating an interesting thing. But he also ties this message into a statement about the Rust tragedy, which we're going to talk about. And so it doesn't feel like it's just a, a random thought. It feels like it is a little bit more connected. And this is part of the same pattern that we've seen from Baldwin, where he'll release a story Along with the statement, we saw prior statements from the holidays about just wanting to be home with his family. And this is following that same pattern, almost a script. The last reason would be this is scripted. This isn't just Alec being crazy. This isn't just a nice, innocent old story. This is something that is a little bit more scripted. And as we go through this, think about some of the emotions that you're feeling or that they're trying to communicate. This is a personable story. It's something that's intended to show he's emotional. He's thinking about these things. He's spiritual. It's meaningful. It's symbolic. And this is an actor, right? Somebody with a lot of experience, somebody who is well credentialed as an actor, won awards for you know, however many decades he's been doing this stuff. And so he's delivering a performance as much as anything. And here is the Splenda packet. So the Splenda packet now, if we do a quick zoom in on this thing, you'll see it does in fact have something written on it. Can't really make too much out here just from the zoom in on this. I'm sure there's probably a higher resolution photograph somewhere, but you can see it looks like somebody wrote a couple things on the top, something uh, a new year, something to a new year down here, heart you over here. We have a smiley face sort of on the side. And so this is what he's talking about. We'll dive into that a little bit further, but now that we see what he just held up to the camera, let's pick this back up and see what he says this said to him and how he is interpreting this. What does this mean to Alec Baldwin? She found the Splenda packet. You are 100% true. Thanks for the laughs, good sir. Cheers to a new year, love you. It's <clears throat> the Splenda Packet. Does this mean 2022 is gonna be a good year? 
Wouldn't that be nice? Mm, wouldn't that um, be nice? Anyway, that is nothing short of a miracle. I'm gonna find out his neighbor's name and I'm gonna send her a gift. I mean, can you believe something as silly as this has that much value? I'm putting it in pockets now where like, I'll never lose it again. But anyway, um... Oh my I'm God. putting that... Oh my God. That's amazing, that's a miracle. Uh, one of the quick... I'm putting that in my pocket so I'll never lose it again. What a miracle. You know, I'm this gigantic, famous Hollywood actor. I've got all this money, all this fame. I've got all the goodies that everybody might possibly want in life. The only thing that matters to me is just this humble little Splenda packet. I'm just a man of the people. Somebody wrote me a, a nice little message on this and it means the world to me. In fact, it's so good that I'm going to put it in my pocket and I'm never going to forget it, he says. And you know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to figure out who sent me this Splenda packet and I'm going to send them a nice present because I'm such a nice guy. And you are 100% true, he says. Thanks for the laughs, good sir. You're accurate. You're truthful. What you're saying is honest. This is a symbol from the universe that you are on the path of righteousness. Good sir. Happy New Year. And he says, wouldn't it be nice? Mr. Prosecutor, to not charge me with the crime and have 2022 be a good year. Once again, here's the Splenda packet. You can see we rotate it around a little bit. Hard to kind of make out what's on the other side. Looks like that's happy to happy new year to you. And thanks for the laughs. You can see sort of on the bottom there at the top looks like a smiling face here. Nice little drawing. And so he's, it's very meaningful to Alec Baldwin. He's going to be uh, keeping that for some time. And so now we're going to pivot from the story, right? He's going to go from this nice, very beautiful story, very meaningful. It means the world to him. I'm in this very deep, dark, despairing place. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. I, I'm really hopeful that this new year is going to be much better. Uh, but also I have something else to say. That's amazing. That's a miracle. Uh, one other quick note, any suggestion that I am not complying with requests or orders or demands or search warrants about my phone, that's bullshit. That's a lie. Whoa, well, that escalated quickly. My goodness, it went from this nice, beautiful story about a meaningful Splenda packet into this is a bunch of BS and don't you even question me about it. But he's using this language very, very carefully. He's saying anybody who's saying that I am not complying is lying or being dishonest. And he's saying that accurately, but it's a little bit disingenuous because what we're conflating here are two different concepts, consent versus compliance. And he wants you to think that he's talking about consent. He's not. He's talking about compliance. Let's take a listen to this statement in full and then we'll dissect it. That's amazing. That's a miracle. Uh, one other quick note, any suggestion that I am not complying with requests or orders or demands or search warrants about my phone, that's bullshit. That's a lie. This is a process where one state makes the request of another state. Someone from another state, from another state can't come to you and say, give me your phone. Give me this. Give me that. They can't do that. They've got to go through the state you live in. That is a process that takes time. They have to specify what exactly they want. They can't just go through your phone and take... You know, your uh, your photos or your love letters to your wife or what have you. I, I really don't uh, know. But, <clears throat> but Yeah, he really doesn't know. And he's right. They can't just go through any of your stuff and take it. We still live in America. We still have the Fourth Amendment. We still are protected against unreasonable searches and seizures, largely. But he's right. There is a search warrant that exists. And because there's a search warrant, the search warrant is coming from New Mexico. He's not living in New Mexico. And so New Mexico doesn't have authority out of this search warrant to just reach out to any other state that they want to and just gobble it up. This is why we have different states, different jurisdictions, and we have different rules in place for how these states and how these things work when one state communicates with another. But the search warrant looks like this. And you can see the authority is being delegated right within it. It says those authorized to any author officer authorized to execute this warrant, you now please go and do it. And you can see here it says it's search and seizure of a cellular warrant believed to be an Apple iPhone. 
due to conversations between Affiant, which is the detective, and Alec Baldwin being conducted through the iMessages. The phone belongs to Baldwin, believed to be in his possession, mobile number ending in 3999. Full telephone number is known, however, redacted. It's on Verizon Wireless. And so this is something that, yes, right, it says, out of the magistrate court of the state of New Mexico, state of New Mexico plaintiff in the matter belonging to this. Now, this is all just limited to the jurisdiction of New Mexico. And so Alec Baldwin is not in New Mexico. And so as we heard him say, well, I'm just perfectly willing to comply with everything, right? I am not not complying is what he said. But what he's conflating is a different concept called consent. Consent is this. Consent means that you are giving the government right to go and look at your documents. Fourth Amendment rights, like other constitutional rights, may be waived. And one may consent to a search of his person or premises by officers who have not complied with the Fourth Amendment. So in other words, law enforcement in the investigation, in this case, could have just gotten this through consent and not through a search warrant. The Fourth Amendment stops the government from coming in and just taking anything that they want. They need to go get a warrant to do that. But it doesn't stop you from giving the government what they want. You're free to do that. If a governor, if, if law enforcement shows up to your front door and says, uh, we'd like to take a search around your house, and you say, come on in. Well, they don't need a warrant because you gave them consent. And if you say, well, they're charging me with crimes because they found all my illegal drugs over there, that's your problem. Not theirs. You gave them consent to come in. Same concept here. Baldwin is saying, I am not not complying, but that doesn't mean that he is consenting to the search. In fact, he's doing the exact opposite of this. According to the search warrant, they are saying that he has specifically refused. A fiant down here is the person who is the detective, Alexandria Hancock. She's writing that she discovered photographs of receipts in the phone of Helena Hutchins dating back to September 7th, showing various receipts. A client requested Alex's phone from him as well as his attorney and was instructed to acquire a warrant. Alec Baldwin has contacted a client numerous times through phone calls and texts using the number. Therefore, I believe that to be a number he uses on a regular basis. A, a client is aware of the entire cell phone number, but it's been redacted and so on. But you can see here, Alec is in fact not consenting to giving them the phone at all. They asked him for this. They said, Alec, would you please cooperate with us? Would you please comply with our request to give us your phone? Alexandria Hancock went and did that. Alec Baldwin said no, and his defense attorneys said no, which they should. But that's not what Alec Baldwin is sort of hinting is happening. He's saying we are not, you know, not complying. They are fighting, giving the search warrant, the phone over. They're making them go through the official process, right? And that's what's happening behind the scenes legally. So it's a little bit different. He's being a little bit disingenuous here. Not entirely dishonest. I think that they are complying with everything. In other words, once they get a warrant that is... is an order from a court from his state that from his court that has jurisdiction and they say, Alec, give him your phone. I'm sure he's going to do that. He will comply, but he's complying to a court order. He's not consenting voluntarily and being very cooperative like he's sort of implying here. He carries on explaining this, saying he's going to comply, which is where he's getting a little bit more clear on this and how this is going to work. Of course, we are 1000% uh, uh, going to comply with all that work. Uh, you know, perfectly fine with that. And uh, when you get ordered, but the um, uh, um, as I always say, consider the source. You know, the people that tell you that. You know, Sidney Poitier died. Okay, so he just starts to change the story a little bit. So we are going to comply as soon as there's an official order, right? As soon as as soon as he absolutely has to do it. But he's not helping. He's not voluntarily giving it to them. They're, he's making them go through the formal process. Investigators from New Mexico asked for it. Him and his lawyers said, go get a warrant. And you can see why. They want everything 
from the cell phone back to the search warrant you can see it wants uh, everything including the cellular phone the items to be seized a forensic download including digital images emails social network accounts deleted digital movies evidence of social network accounts text messages internet browser histories phone books stored cache histories pa every stinking thing that you can imagine is going to be a part of the seizure. All contacts, names, recent call lists, graphic files, multimedia files, SMS messages, MMS messages, any owner information, GPS records, removable memory, all of it. Anything related to the production of Rust, any member working on the production, all of it. They want it all. And so Alec Baldwin, of course, his defense attorneys, rightfully so, are saying, no, you can't have any of that. Go get it formally. We're not going to give it to you. We saw this same argument in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. Remember when Gage Grosskritz came to the stand, this is something that Mark Richards, Kyle Rittenhouse defense attorney, cross-examined him about and said Kyle Rittenhouse voluntarily consented to giving his cell phone data over to the government. Why didn't you? Because there's a lot of data there. Alec Baldwin and his defense team has made the decision they will not be disclosing it. So then Alec now comes out and says, we need to get into this. We need to find out what the truth was, what really happened. Here's what Alec says. A nonsense. Um, the best way, the only way we can honor the death of Helena Hutchins is to find out the truth. That's what I'm working toward, insisting on, demanding, um, that the organizations involved in this investigation uh, do everything in their power, everything in their power to find out what really happened. That's all that matters. The best way to honor. To find out what happened, find out the truth. That's all that matters. And, you know, we've been asking ourselves this for many videos now on this channel. Many times we've sh shown Alec Baldwin here, he's sort of third position, and he's the last line of defense before the firearm is being used. We know that the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed here on the left was supposed to be somebody who loads the gun, checks it. We have David Halls, checks it, announces it's clear and ready. Then it goes over to Alec Baldwin who checks it before he actually uses it. But now everybody is trying to shift blame. They're trying to say everybody else is responsible for this thing. And so obviously Alec is going to say that Hannah Gutierrez Reed was negligent. She allowed a bad bullet to get in there. Somebody else allowed a bad bullet to get in there. Maybe David Halls was negligent. Maybe somebody else who's not in this chain was negligent. Or you may be seeing a situation where somebody else on the set swapped some bullets out, but they were supp still supposed to you know, go through Reed, who was supposed to go to Halls, who was supposed to then check it and give it to Alec, who was then supposed to use it, but check it before he used it. And so you can see now they may try to say that Miss Hutchins herself was even negligent, telling Alec to shoot before it was appropriate for him to do that. So there's all sorts of different ways that Alec is going to be trying to sort of break this chain here. But the point of all of this is sort of no matter which way you splice this, no matter how he tries to insulate himself to try to, to sort of break the causal chain and make it go around him. If you still believe that he had to check it before he used it, then it doesn't really matter who was negligent. Everybody else was could be very negligent, but he's still directly responsible for failing to check it. He had a duty to check before he used it, and he didn't do it. I mean, the only really sort of alternative theory would be that, you know, Alec got the gun, like checked it, right, set it down, grab the drink of his whatever, set the drink down, pick the gun up, and then used it, and something happened in that in interim, you know, something like that, because he already checked it. But I, I, again, you still should check it and then use it immediately, not check it, set it down. You still should be checking it again. So I still think that as long as you find that that is something that you think he had a duty to do, check before use, if he failed that, there's nothing in this chain that removes him from it. So Alec Baldwin continues here. He's getting a little bit upset and agitated. The death of Helena Hutchins is to find out the truth. And um, any suggestion that we're not complying myself and uh, any lawyers I'm working with or what have you is a lie. That's a lie. We're gonna, as, as soon as we go through this process, then by all means we will comply. We will comply. But, um, so you're not currently <clears throat> complying. I have no worries about that. I have no worries about that. 
That's all going to work itself. No out. worries. Why? Because of what they say in these right wing rag sheets and what people who are all about hate. What? Um, right wing rag sites. These people who are all about hate. You mean people who are saying that Alec Baldwin must be prosecuted like me right here is where you'll watch that video. But I've been saying that for a long time. And let me be very clear about this. If and when Alec Baldwin does in fact get charged, I'll be the first person to defend him aggressively. And I'll make some pretty good arguments, I think, to support that. But at this moment in time, he is not somebody who is outside the justice system. We see many other people who are involved in accidentally killing people, accidentally shooting people, Kim Potter, who end up going to prison as a result of their mistake. Alec Baldwin is doing something inappropriate here, trying to get in front of this to dissuade the charges from coming out or anybody else in his position would have already been charged with a crime. So here we can see Alec Baldwin upset with people like me, probably calling me a hate-filled right-wing rag person, when all we're talking about is accountability and transparency. Nobody else gets the same opportunity to show up on George Stephanopoulos' show or to show up at DC galas to have fun palling around with some of the most powerful people in the country. It's not appropriate. One system, one equal system for all, not different tiers for different people. Then you get different systems that work up differently for different people and result in different outcomes. That's not justice. Let's see what Alec Baldwin continues on here saying, this is why I'm so confident that even despite all those right wing rag video people on YouTube, I'm okay. But setting aside all the, the hate, setting aside all the January 6th of it all, there it is. Wow is right. Very, very wow indeed. Alec Baldwin, very interesting video. I still think all of this is scripted. I still think it's highly intentional. I do not think that Alec Baldwin has lost his mind. I think his attorneys know what they're doing. They are trying to get ahead of the story. They know that when you analyze the situation every which way, Alec Baldwin had a final duty. He failed to do a duty somebody died as a result of this. So they're doing what they can to get ahead of the charges, trying to dissuade the prosecution, dissuade the investigators from bringing the criminal charges. Alec Baldwin has a tremendous amount of power through his media influence, through his money, through his political connections to see this all go away. We want to make sure that we're living in the same system of justice. What do you think? Do you agree with that or disagree with that? What do you think about Alec Baldwin's video? Let me know down in the comments below. Leave a like. I'd love it if you subscribe before you got out of here. Stick around a little while and I will see you on the next one.